We're in this series, and the series is called This Makes Us, and we've been talking about family and how to be a family and how, more importantly, to be a Christ-centered family. And so we thought, what a great way to end the series by having a family service. So there's going to be a little more family noise than normal, and we're going to do a lot of different things to kind of break it up and to keep them engaged and to keep you engaged. And uh, about March, we had a transition as a church family where we had uh, Paul Luna, who had been our children's pastor, and then Jeremy was our student ministries pastor, and that was kind of a traditional way of having a full-time person in each slot. And then Jeremy stepped in for the interim, and he said, I'll try to cover both bases and be the, the leader for those. And there has been some wonderful improvements in all that. And I want to introduce to you Jeremy Foltz. If you don't know him already, let's give him a hand as he comes up, shall we? <laughs> this is the guy that took on that big challenge, and we're happy to announce that he's going to take the title Family Pastor. Not next generation. Not next gen. That sounded Thanks. cooler, though. I Thanks, think Logan. he likes that better. Yeah. But the family says not only is he for kids and for teens, but he is for the families. Mm -hmm. So tell us what you would like to see happen in the, in the children's ministry and the student ministry. Yeah, so in children and uh, student ministry, I've been working in churches for a long time, for about 14 years. And traditionally, like what Paul was saying, was there's usually a full-time student pastor and a full-time children's pastor. And even though that generally works and everything's great, one thing I have noticed is that there's, there's a church term called silos. Um, silos are built. So the transition from children's to students, there's kids that drop off along the way. It's not a smooth transition. Also, what I notice is like here, I've been here for about a year and a half, almost actually two years now. Um, wow. You guys have kept me around that long. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so, so like when students come into student ministry and I'm like, hey, turn to John. They're like, where's that? Or I'm like, hey, turn to Acts. They're like, is that in the Old or the New Testament? So the thing with being a family pastor and overseeing all is that you know where the benchmarks are. You have milestones that kids will hit along the way without having some fumbles. And, and there's always going to be some work that needs to be happening, and there's always some, some extra things. But, but there is an idea set in motion that this is the goal in mind. We want our kids to be Christ-centered and, um, and know the Bible and know the Word of and God. And they have a consistent process all the exactly. way through instead of skipping books of the Bible or yeah. skipping pieces. Exactly. So... That's awesome that we want you to do that. What can you do with the parents to help them get involved with their kids? So with parents, um, I think it's really important for parents to be involved with their children in their spiritual life. Um, I say this all the time. I do not want to be your kid's spiritual hero. I want you to be that. Hmm. Um, I want you to succeed in that level, in, the, in that arena. So what we've been doing in, in student ministry for the first year and a half or almost two years now is every week I send out a weekly email. And on that weekly email is a blog about what we talked about so you know what we're talking about. Um, and then at the very bottom of it are questions. There's head, heart, hand questions. What do I think? What do you feel? What are you going to do now? So questions that you can ask your child about what we talked about on uh, Sunday night here at Alive. And so what we've done since I've stepped in is I really wanted to use that for children's ministry. Again, I want you to be the spiritual hero, not me. So there's, again, just kind of an outline of what we talked about, some of the stories and different things like that that you get when you go pick up your child after service every week and you grab that parent sheet. There's a sheet, and it's a parent sheet, and there's questions, again, that you ask your child throughout the week. There's bedtime, dinner time, and car time questions to help you become the spiritual hero for your that, family. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Parents need all the help we can get, right? Yes. And grandparents, don't forget that. Um, so obviously he can't... I mean, he's providing some of the leadership for this, but he can't do all the man hours, all the woman hours that are involved in taking care of this. No, not So there's somebody that fills in all of that and makes you look great. And that's yes. Katrina Ratledge. Katrina, Katrina Ratledge. Come on up here. Come up here, Katrina. You're young. You can just bounce. Oh. She's going over to the old yeah. people. Here. So Katrina can't talk because she's been at a Christian music conference all this last <laughs> week, and uh, she's basically hoarse. But tell us what your title is. Let's get you this mic here. Just talk really loud. I'm just kidding. She can't talk So, at like, all. this morning when she came in, she was like, hey, Jeremy, how are you? You know, so I was like, wow, what kind so of we concert decided right was then. that? I'm an awesome you know. man voice right now. That's great. <laughs> I'm the kids' ministry assistant coordinator. And what's your nickname? K-Mac. <laughs> kids' ministry assistant. You, you, you figured it out. There it is. Okay. And what do you do? Everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I coordinate like the teachers in the classrooms and I get the classrooms all set up and 
write curriculum with Jeremy and organize like the big events like the Harvest Party and the VBX in the summer. And she does a lot all of work. sorts of stuff. And Everything she is actually, this is an exciting thing for us as a church family because we've known her since she was little and she came up going to VBS, helping with VBS, going to the Mexico teams, beginning to work on the worship team. So she's what we call homegrown leadership. And it's exciting for her, it's exciting for us as a church, because that's what we want to do, is develop people and see that multiplicity. So thank you very much for all you do. I'm taking the mic back. (laughs) Yeah, she makes me look good. Like, everybody's like, you're doing a great job. I'm like, I have a secret weapon. So, (laughs) she is amazing. Okay, so one of the things we're going to do is like they do in kids' ministry. This was their assignment on week one, and Jeremy is going to teach you how to learn this verse right here, okay? All right, so we're gonna blend a little bit of student ministry and children's ministry. And so in student ministry, we have a verse, we call it an anchor verse. And it's a verse that just summarizes the series and we try to learn that verse. So we're gonna try to do that with you guys. And what we do in kids ministry and student ministry is everyone stand up. So if you guys could all stand up and we're gonna say this all together out loud um, and we'll see where you guys are at. So you guys ready? And so what we do is we all clear our throats. Everybody clear your throat. <clears throat> there you go. All right. You see where it says James 119? We're going to slide that to the bottom. Okay. So we're going to say the, the um, reference at the end. All right. We're ready? Clear your throat one last time. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. One, two, three. My, My dear, dear brothers and sisters, sisters take, take note, note of, of this. this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Great job, everyone. Oh, James 119. I'm so s- I did that last night, too. Okay, sorry. My bad. We need some, right. kids. We need some kids up here to help yeah, you, I need, buddy. I need some help. So before you guys all sit down, this is what we do in kids' ministry. You guys stay standing. Um, is that we take out some words, and so we're going to see what you remembered. Last night, I did amazingly horrible. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, again, James 119, Jeremy's at the end. Okay, here we go. Everybody clear your throat, clear your throat. <clears throat> All right, one, two, three. My, My dear brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters take, take note, note of, of this. this. Everyone, Everyone should be quick, quick to listen, listen, slow to speak, and, and slow to become, become angry. James 119. <laughs> Good job, everyone. All right, we got, we're not done just yet. I know, like, we like to stand in kids and student ministry. Is we're gonna, we have another one. Now, this one, uh, is, this, is this the next one? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we're missing more. Okay, so um, this is going to be very interesting. Uh, the next one is even more amazing. Okay, so, all right, anyways, everybody clear your throat. <clears throat> all right, here we go. One, two, three. My, My brother, dear brothers and, and sisters, sisters take, take note, note of, of this. this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Great job. James, one. I did it again. Okay, I'm so sorry. All right, we got one last one. All right. So this is the beginning letter of every word in this verse, okay? Simple. Some of you guys, some of you guys are looking at me like, yeah, I'm not even going to try. And so um, we're... But I really want to encourage you to really try this. All right, last one. James 119 at the end. Okay, so, all right, everybody clear your throat. <clears throat> one, two, three. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. James 119. Great job. All right, not done just yet. Um, Another thing that we do in kids' ministry is games. And the reason why we do games, not just because it's fun and exciting, but we do games that kind of help you memorize some things and kind of help you get from here to there. So we're going to play a game called Simon Says. I want to see if they're quick to listen or not. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's see. The, oh, yeah, number one, quick to listen. There it is. All right, so, um, but, but we're going to do Simon Says. Now, is there, if there's nobody that knows how to play Simon Says, it's okay. You must be from Canada. Um, so this is how you play Simon. That wasn't a bad joke. Okay, so uh, this is how you play Simon Says. I'm going to say Simon Says in an action. And when I say that, then you're going to do whatever that is. So if I say Simon Says, pat your head, you pat your head. But if I say an action without saying Simon Says, and you do that action, you are out. So you will just sit down in your chair. In shame and despair. In shame yeah. and despair. Way to go, pastor. Okay, sure. okay so, all right. 
You guys ready? Everybody know the rules? Yep. All right, here we go. We'll do the first one. Simon says, pat your head. Simon says, touch your left elbow. Simon says, touch your right elbow. Touch your right hand. I didn't say Simon says. All right, sit down, sit down if you're out. That's okay. Jesus still loves you. All right. Paul doesn't. Just kidding. Okay, so, all right. Simon says, look up. Simon says, look down. Simon says, look to the right and to the left. Oh, you guys are so good. Simon says you can release your left elbow or right elbow, whatever elbow that was. All right, Simon says, maybe a little harder, stand on one foot, and if you have to, you can put your foot down. No? Simon says, switch feet. Simon says, spin around. You can stop whenever. Oh, I didn't say Simon Says. Great job. Simon Says Stop. All right, you guys are doing an amazing job. You guys can all sit down. If I can just get you guys to come up, that'd be great. I didn't say Simon Says. Great job. All right, Simon Says, Papa Squad. All right, so... My wife said that's probably inappropriate to say, but I say it all the time. All right, so for me in, in my family, um, I don't always listen very well. Uh, and my wife, I think she knows this. I think so, I heard an amen over there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so like she, she knows when to talk to me, and because I just kind of say yes to everything, um, typically when a TV is on. And so usually what happens is she'll come to me and she's like, hey, we got a thing we're going to do at 1.30, whatever the thing is. We're going to go shopping or we're going to go into town or go do whatever. And I'd be like, well, I, was, I already had something planned. And she's like, no, you told me you're going to do it. And I said, was I watching TV? And she's like, I don't know, maybe. And so like I am just so quick to say, yeah, 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 because I'm ready to watch whatever is on the TV. Usually the Cubs, uh, they broke my heart. Um, <laughs> Shame, fool me once, shame on you. <laughs> fool me 108 years, shame on me. No, so. That's the man of listen. faith. He has, he's still hoping for the Cubs. So. <laughs> so we want to talk about being quick to listen. What does that mean? Obviously, it means paying attention. But if you're writing on your outline, here's something you can write that's extra. And I've tried to encourage you not to just fill in the blanks, but write some extra things. And here's the key part of listening carefully is asking good questions. Quite often, people dialogue, only it's really a dialogue of the deaf. One person tells their story, then the other person tells their story, and you're trying to top it, or you're trying to show that you're, you understand more, or you're funny, or whatever it is. And rarely do people stop and look you in the eye and say, tell me more about that. What, what was that like? Or how are your grandkids doing? Or what happened when that, when that surgery you had? Think of the number of people in your life that actually remembers what you said last time and ask you a question about it the next time. Hmm. I tell you, they're rare. It's because we have a tendency to be really good at talking. We're quick to speak and slow to hear. Last night, somebody said, remind them that God gave us two ears and one mouth, and that was a clue. <laughs> be quick to hear. So asking good questions sometimes is simple things like remembering something they said last time and asking about that. Sometimes it's like around, and we've talked about this in your, in your sheet, there is a, a paper called Best Practices. Don't read it now. <laughs> but it's some things that you can do in your home, whatever stage of life you're in, to be able to improve communication. And one thing families do is at supper, everybody says, joy, junk, and Jesus. What was the highlight of your day? Let kids tell about that. What was the good thing for them? What was the hard part of the day? What was the junk? What was the, the hurtful thing or the friend that said, I don't want to be your best friend anymore or whatever? And then was there any place in which you prayed or which Jesus showed up or which you were thinking about a spiritual thing? Because by asking the question, you help them begin to think about that the next day. So asking good questions in every kind of relationship. And, and I want to say, you who've been married a long time, Sometimes we get thinking we already know what people are going to say, and we don't really listen. And people are unique, and they're different, and they go through different things. So ask good questions, and get into the practice of asking questions of people you care about, 
And that helps you do the next thing, which is don't interrupt. Uh, I was raised in a home with five kids. If you didn't interrupt, you were silent. <laughs> there were no spaces to jump into. So you just learned to boom. Uh, I found out when I got married that my wife is deeply offended when you interrupt her, especially repeatedly. So we've only been married 36 years. We're still working on that. <laughs> but this idea of not speaking when somebody else is speaking, such a simple idea, so hard to do. What does your family but, talk about? But even like, even that, sometimes though, we may not interrupt out loud, but we interrupt in here. So when your wife is talking to you, or when your kids are talking to you, or something had happened during the day, or whatever, like they're telling you and you're trying to listen, but you already have like a rebuttal in your head. So something we say in our house is, don't interrupt me even in your mind. Don't interrupt me. Just listen actually listen to what is being said to you or said um, for you. So don't interrupt even in your mind. So number two, number two is slow to speak. Slow. Is that how you say it? I, I'm slow. not sure that's what that passage means, actually. I, I think If you're I from think, Texas, you can talk real slow. Slow to speak. Okay, so slow to speak. I think it means think about what you say before you say it. Yeah, I don't do that. Okay, so you should do that. Um, why is that important? Why is that important? It's important to be able to um, talk to people and to really listen and to really be able not just to throw back words, but really, really listen. So um, I, I like to do a game, and I really enjoy games. And so what is on the line? Anybody like Dutch Bros? Raise your hand if you just love Dutch Bros. Is there anybody that just love free stuff? It doesn't matter what it is, just as long as it's free. All right, so we are, we are going to play a game for a $5 Dutch Bro card. It's right here. Um, it is amazing. So what we're going to do is um, we'll explain the game. This is what we do in student ministry. I never tell, everybody's like, so what are we going to do, you know, on Sunday night? I never tell them what we're going to do, so they just do it. And so, um, but this game require, or has toothpaste that's involved, I'll tell you that much. So what I need is Paul's going to pick out someone that's 18 years or older, and I'm going to pick out someone that's 17 years or younger. Paul, you can go first. Who are you going to pick? Raise your hand if you okay, want to play. Okay, adults, adults. Yeah. Dusty, great, <laughs> I thought... I was looking for somebody without their hand up. All right. That's, that's so good. I, I don't do that. Okay, so he, he's thinking, if you I were wish under didn't know 17, come on up stage. Yep, back come on back up there with the bun on the head. What's your name? Emma. Emma. Give it up for Emma. All right. All right. Okay. So this is what you're yep, going to do. This is where you're standing. <laughs> he's really excited. All right, so this is what we're going to do, is I'm going to count down three, two, one, go, and on go, you're going to undo the toothpaste tube, the, the cap, and you're going to squeeze out as much toothpaste as you can. The first all one, out. Has to be all, all out. All out. That's all right. out. And the first one to complete it gets a $5 Dutch Bro card. Now, what I need from you guys is I need your excitement, okay? So, so what I need is who thinks Dustin's going to win? Sure, yeah, come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. That was kind of weak, Dustin. Who thinks Emma's going to win? All right. <laughs> you got a lot to prove. All right, here we go. We got a countdown, buddy. We got Don't a countdown. We got a countdown here. No, he, didn't, he didn't get it. Watch this. We got a countdown? No. No. Okay. Oh, I guess you're going to give the countdown. April Fool. Okay, so, all right. I'm going to say three, two, one, go. And then you're going to squeeze out as much as you can, as fast as you can. <laughs> you, can you can kick her. You can, no, you can't. Okay, so here we go. Experience. Right. Count down with me. Three, two, one, go. go! Oh, wow. Dustin, she's killing you right now. Uh oh. Uh oh. He's got the rolling technique. Uh oh. I think Dusty's got it. Dusty yeah, won. All right, hold on, hold on. We're not done just yet. So now, I have another Dutch pro. So for an extra Dutch Bro card, so that's $10. Okay, so for an extra Dutch Bro card, what I need is for you to put all the toothpaste back in the tube. Okay? We ready? Count down with me. Three, Three two, two, one. one. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm just kidding. All right, good job. Give it up for our participants. 
You can have one too. All right. Great job. It's always funny. They're like, are you serious? Like, how are we going to do this? Like, it's so hard. It's so hard to put toothpaste back in a tube. Has anyone ever actually tried that? I've never tried it because I'm like, nah, whatever. So, but, but I think it's so, as hard as it is to put toothpaste back in a tube, it's so hard to get the words that you say come back into your mouth. It's almost like trying to hit the rewind button and it's just not working. I have a friend, when he says he said something bad, he, he goes, Bzzz! like, <laughs> did you ever rush, those words came out and you're thinking, I wish I had thought before I said that and now I'm trying to reel it back in. Jeremy, you have a story about some words that were yeah, like that. My, my dad, um, when I was younger, he started when I was younger, and I, and I really believe this before I say what he had said to me, I really believe he was trying to encourage me. I really felt like, you know, now that I'm older, that it was something that he said to try to inspire me to not do wrong or do bad. And he would usually say it whenever I would mess up. So at my, like, worst moment or in my mind, the worst thing that had happened or I didn't do well on a school project or I didn't get something done at home or anything. And something he used to say to me is, Jeremy, you're dumber than a bag of rocks. Now, and I know, and I know, like, now, like, I look at that and, like, man, that was, I would never say that to my kid. Um, the thing is, Little did he know at 36 years old when I would mess up with something or I dropped the ball or something wouldn't work the way I want it to work, I still remember his tone and I still remember how he said it and the direction that he said it. It's amazing. Um, the things that we say to our kids and about our kids, that is something that they continue to start to believe about themselves. Mm. So we have to be careful what we say to our kids and what we say about our kids or our grandkids or, or the neighbor kid across the street because they will start to believe it about themselves. Some of the ugliest words I've ever heard have been between couples who were married to each other and committed to love and honor each other for the rest of their life. And, they, and we can get angry and say some of the most awful things. Ephesians 4 talks about what does it mean to be slow to speak. And it gives this very, very absolute but simple picture. It says, don't let, how much? What's that next word? Any. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Not only damaging hurtful things like calling somebody names or, or saying something mean to them, but, but just those things that are worthless. Sometimes coarse jesting, vulgar things you're saying. Sometimes, just, <laughs> sometimes people just say away too many words. And they don't give somebody else a chance to say words. So he says, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. And then look at this last phrase, that it may benefit those who listen. Let me ask you just a tough question. Of the percentage of things that come out of your mouth in a day, how many of them do you think are for you to benefit you, to get what you want, to tell people what you think? And how many of them are actually to help the people who are listening to you. I'll bet we're lucky if it's 10% for helping others. And what we're saying is that that needs to grow. And I want to give you a very quick thing, a simple thing to remember. And kids, this is what you can write on the outside of your outline if you want to add some extra, extra credit here. Write the word think, T-H-I-N-K. Write that over on the right side. And each of those stand for something because the way to be slow to speak is to think before you speak. The T stands for true. Is what you're saying true? You know how many people pass on things that are rumors and gossip and I heard maybe and I'm not sure if it really happened, but it can destroy people and it's not even true. And I don't know if you've ever been gossiped about, but when somebody tells a story that's not true about you, there, there's nothing you can do to stomp it out. So it has to be true, and then it has to be helpful. Is it really designed with them in mind? Can I lift them up? Can I, can I do something that gives them good information? The third thing is, is it inspiring? And the word I think of is, is it encouraging? Does it make them feel more ready to handle the day? Does it, does it lift them up? Does it make them feel better? Instead of saying you're dumber than a bag of rocks, say, good job, Jeremy. I know you tried really hard, and next time we're going to get it. And Boy, those things, especially at moments where you're vulnerable and hurting. And then is it necessary? 
And we in our life groups, we, uh, we talk about that there are some people who overshare. They may have good things to say, they just say too many things. And there are people that undershare. Listen, it doesn't say be silent, it says be slow to speak. Some of you need to step in and say important and valuable words because you've just been hiding because you're afraid. You've been shy. So true, helpful, inspiring, necessary. Is this the right timing for it? Is this the right amount? Those kind of questions. And what's the K? Kind. Mm. Kind. Is it kind? Because we can say a lot of things that are truthful, you know, that, that are true. We can say things that are helpful. We can say things that are inspiring. We can say things that are necessary. But are we also saying it kindly? Um, a lot of times, uh, just working with students for a long time, um, you have a win with a student, and you can speak life into them and correctional life into them if you build a relationship with them. And I know as parents, and I know like when we have kids, like they're my kids, so I can say these things, and and I I stand on that, I I believe that. But do you have a relationship? There's something about having a relationship with your son or your daughter. Do you have a relationship with the one that you're going to correct? Because when you correct them, you can correct them. I'm all for that. But you need to build a relationship. You need to build a relationship. So lastly, number three, slow to become angry. Slow and this, become angry. This helps you be slow to speak, because when we get angry, we get stupid. You know, we just we, say whatever is on our mind. We lose it all, yep. Uh, the last illustration I'd like to show you guys or, or have you guys be a part of is um, we use movie illustrations and video illustrations um, because it's fun and exciting, but it's also another way that kids can learn and something kind of clicks in their mind. So I'd like to show you a movie from, uh, or a movie called Inside Out. Now, it was a cartoon movie, and in this cartoon movie, what is happening, just kind of give you a quick backstory, is there's this family from Minnesota, and they, they, uh, tr- or they uh, moved down to California in San Francisco. That's and a so, traumatic event. Yeah. It is a traumatic event. Yeah. San Francisco, <laughs> I should just say that. And so anyways, but they moved down to San Fran, and um, the daughter is just, you know, she's fourth grade, I think, and so she's just a whole new world. And inside each of their minds on the cartoon are uh, kind of characters. There's like five characters in each mind, and they're, they're emotions. And so I'd like to show you this clip. Hey, Riley. I've got good news. I found a junior hockey league right here in San Francisco, and get this, tryouts are tomorrow after school. What luck, right? Hockey? Uh Uh-oh, what do we do? Guys, uh, this, uh, here, you you pretend to be joined. Won't it be great to be back out on the ice? Oh yeah, that sounds fantastic. What was that? That wasn't anything like joy. Uh, because I'm not joy? Yeah, no kidding. Did you guys pick up on that? Uh-huh. Sure Ooh. did. Something's wrong. Should we ask her? Let's probe, but keep it subtle so she doesn't notice. So, how was the first day of school? She's probing us. I'm done. You pretend to be Joy. What? Okay. Um, hmm. It was fine, I guess. I don't know. Oh, very smooth. That was just like Joy. Something is definitely going on. She's never acted like this before. What should we do? We're going to find out what's happening, but we'll need support. Signal the husband. Ahem. <laughs> With a nice pass oh, over the oh, reed, comes across oh, that right. Ahem. Oh, Uh-oh, she's, she's looking at us. Uh, what did she say? What? Oh, oh, sorry, sir. No one was listening. Is it garbage night? Uh, we left the toilet seat up. What? What is it, woman? What? <sighs> He's making that stupid face again. I could <laughs> strangle him right now. Signal him again. Ah, so, Riley, how was school? Seriously? Oh, are you kidding me? Time. For this, we gave up that Brazilian helicopter pilot? <laughs> Boo, I'll be joy. School was great, all right? Riley, is everything okay? <sighs> Sir, she just rolled her eyes at us. What is her deal? All right, make a show of force. I don't want to have to put the foot down. No, not the foot. Riley, I do not like this new attitude. Oh, I'll show you attitude, okay? No, 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 stay happy! What is your problem? Just leave me alone. Sir, reporting high levels of sass. Take it to DEFCON 2. You heard that, gentlemen? DEFCON 2. Listen, young lady, I don't know where this disrespectful attitude came from. You want a piece of this, Pops? Come and get it! Yeah, well, well... Here it comes. Prepare the foot. 
keys to safety position. Ready to launch on your command, sir. Just shut up! Fire! That's it. Go to your room. Now. <laughs> foot is down. The foot is down. Yeah! Woo! Good job, gentlemen. That could have been a disaster. Well, that was a disaster. <laughs> that was a disaster. So you can say that in your home now. The foot is down. <laughs> it's not hard to tell who that little red guy in the middle was, was it? Slow to become angry. Proverbs says that the fool is quick-tempered. How quickly we get irritated, get annoyed, get angry, and that moves us not to listen, not to speak slowly. And I think it's important that you look at the rest of the verse that we talked about there in James. He says we need to be quick, slow, slow. Quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Why? Because the anger of man does not accomplish the righteous life that God desires. It doesn't work to get God's Christ-centered home into our experience. If you want a home that's full of peace, if you, if you want a home that's full of love, if you want a home that has respect, then he says anger doesn't get there. And here's the problem. Anger works in the short term. If I get really mad at you, you'll probably do what I want you to do. But when kids lead their where when parents lead their kids in anger and they pack it into them when they're, get, when they're young, you know what happens when they're teenagers? It all comes out in two or three times. And if you don't want a home full of anger, if you want God's righteousness, then you've got to say, okay, I've got to do it God's way. So we've got to say, okay, human anger is not only destructive. In fact, Jesus said we don't want to live by an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And you know what happens if you live by an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth? Soon you're blind and toothless, <laughs> right? Because it escalates. Your anger builds my anger, builds your anger, builds my anger. And there are so many homes that are filled with anger. And isn't it incredible that you can fight about something for two days and you then totally forget what you started fighting about? It wasn't an issue. It was an irritation, and we escalate, and we escalate, and we escalate. So he says, if you want to have God's peace in your home, if you want to have what God is trying to bring, his love, then you memorize this verse, be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. And I don't want you just to remember the words. It's ironic how quickly we forget. I, I told Jeremy, we've been working on this verse all week. We memorized it at the first part. I knew it when I was a kid. And there were only about two times this week when I actually went, oh, slow her down, Glazner. <laughs> Listen, speak carefully. Why? Because your habits are so strong, you need everything in you to let God change your habits. So we want this next week to be different in your home. I want every one of you to bring that up and to talk about it. Oh, that's right. I got to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. And you know what? Teach your kids because they will call you to account. <laughs> They'll remind you that this is how we live and this is what we want to do. So here's the next step for you. So what do we do with this now? Like what, it's one thing when you hear a message and it's next to what do we do now? Uh, next step. So uh, with that, I mean, something that we do in student ministry is that we always have a challenge. We do the big idea and it's a challenge. And so for you, the challenge is spend one day pouring into your family with no TV or other screens. Screens dominate our culture. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be the first one to, to admit, you know, my, all my kids have some sort of screens. And it's so easy for them just to jump on their screens. It's so easy for me sometimes when I want my own time to just, they can just be on the screens, I can do my own thing. And then we're together, but we're not really together. And so my challenge for you is to spend some time with your family with no screens. Now, um, in each one of your programs is a best practice, and there's things, morning routine, dinner time, bedroom routine, family fun, spiritual steps, and then on the flip side, grandparent tips, conflict, express love often, important experiences, and exposure. We cover all the bases here. 
Now, some of you guys may be a little bit older than I am, maybe even a little bit older than Paul, and uh, maybe you're single now, or, you know, and, and I'm not there yet, and it's hard for me to speak into that. It's hard for me because I'm not there yet. But I'll tell you a story of someone that I really respect and somebody I look up to. Um, she's single. She's older than I am. She's older than Paul. And she's made a point in investing in the next generation. And she's gotten to know a family, and because of that, um, she's made a connection with the husband, and now the husband and the whole family come to church because she was not done investing in people. And so my challenge for you is to spend one day pouring into your family, into your family, maybe your personal family, or maybe into the body of Christ in this family with no screens, and just go get a soda, go to, go to Dairy Queen. I love blizzards. And so, but like, do something as a family. Go to the park, go on a hike, do something together with no screens. Yeah. I, I've got a new app on my phone. It tells me how many hours a, a day I averaged on my phone. I don't have that. Yeah, it's a little convicting. <laughs> Let me pray for us, can I? Father, thank you for being family together as a church. Thank you for all the kids that are represented here. Thank you for the, the parents and grandparents who are pouring into them. And God, this week, all week long, please remind us, be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Help us to see the patterns that are there. Help us to, by your spirit, trust that you will begin to change us from the inside out and change our families. And help us to eliminate those things which are destroying us and help us to to concentrate and elevate those things that are important. God, help our families to be different because we choose to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're so glad that you're joining us by video. And uh, I know that some of you are just from our church family here and you're uh, just watching because you can't make it this weekend in person. And I know some of you are watching from around the world, really. And so we just want to say we hope that God blesses you through this. If you have questions, feel free to email me, or if you'd like to let us know um, that God is using this in your life, that's always encouraging, and we have several of you that, that email occasionally. So if you have questions, if you have comments, anything you can uh, give us some feedback, we'd love that, and we trust that God will use this to really enhance your spiritual journey. Thanks. <laughs>